Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you a Spore Druid Necromancer Wizard build guide for in Baldur's Gate 3. Now this can be a very cool class because we're going to be using some things that are extremely synergetic together. Now, we got ourselves a Symbotic Entity which gives us temporary health points, but with this we're going to be able to summon in a lot of different creatures and cast Haste on our entire team. What Haste does is it gives you an extra action to extra armor class and you can move a little bit more so haste is extremely powerful because it gives your casters two spells and this can be pretty crazy so with this build we're going to be starting off as the druid now the druid starts off pretty decently they they want you to take advantage of wild shape while playing as a druid so we got chalet here and we got thorn whip these are gonna be the two cantors we're just gonna go with because they do provide a bit of utility early on chalet on a torch gives you fire damage and magic damage which is really nice but for our ability score this is this is where things get a little bit interesting so we do want a little bit of intelligence because we're going to be playing as a um, wizard as well constitution is quite important too but you can either go something like that um, we want a bit of dexterity to keep our <laughs> armor class not too not too low, but something along the lines of that could work well. Uh, dexterity is going to be important just for initiative as well, but wisdom's our main stat alongside intelligence. So something like that. This is a multi-attribute dependent build, so <laughs> we just lost all our summons there. But we're able to summon even more than just what I showed there. I'm going to talk about how that is. So circle of the spores is what we're going to be picking, which gives us our wild shape. But also gives us the halo of spores, which is a reaction which isn't really nice we're not going to use up an action on that and this gives us a uh, bit of damage there um unleash a cloud necrotic spores and then we also get symbotic en entity which gives us eight temporary health points and we deal one additional one to six necrotic damage while you have them cast halo spores with double damage so this really does start to give us some damage options we also get bone chill and this is like a pure kind of necromancy build i always think that create water if you can take it is very useful because the ability to create water and use a bit of lightning alongside this for double damage is great because necrotic damage is good but some things will resist it i like to have healing word from uh, range bonus action because if one of your teammates goes down instead of using an action to bring them back up and having to walk there you can cast healing word and it'll bring them back up so i always like to have that if if possible too ice knife pairs with create water you can sometimes just most times you can create water before battle starts make a big area of water and then spells like ice knife will deal double damage so that gets really nice early on for damage if you need something i don't like that healing spell there thunder wave can be decent early on it gives you a pushback which sometimes can be actually very useful long strider is a ritual spell so we can always have this equipped to increase creatures movement speed by three meters which is very nice but you can also go with something like fog cloud for blind um one of those choices would be good so i'm just going to keep it a long strider because i don't have that on my party i always like to have at least someone with that just for the utility that it brings now for our next level spells we get level two so there's some really great ones i think that flaming spear actually works very well alongside this because this gives us another summon uh it's a big fiery ball doesn't really have the undead atmosphere like a necromancer would have but it's another body to take hits moonbeam's another good radiant damage um option that you can go with but also spike growth which gives us uh difficult terrain is also a really nice one and uh bark skin can give a bit of extra armor class so i would go with something like that but i like hold person a lot this very good utility spell you can hold someone in place and everyone's going to crit it and criticals are huge next for our feet ability improvement that's like the first thing i want to focus on getting our wisdom up to 18 is kind of important as the circle of spores drew it and then for our cantrip guidance is one of the best early game concentrations gives a 1d8 to ability checks that can be used in you always you need someone to have this at all times so if you don't have a cleric like shadow heart on your team with guidance you need to take it yourself like someone just has to have it it makes the game a lot better N next we can go with something like moonbeam uh this gives us 2 to 20 damage but also spike growth if you want difficult terrain one of these two options i think that spike growth is a little bit better because you can crowd control is the other role of the druid so it's something we do want to have a bit of play in but uh we'll go ahead head here to level five this gives us we do have a wild shape if we want to be tanky and if if push comes to shove that is a really good option for the druid to go into wild shape but uh, we get some more spells here that are very useful so we get 
Um, we get anime dead here, always prepared. This is where we actually become a necromancer, is at level 5. All classes get a nice power boost at level 5, and this is the Circle of Spores boost. We also get gaseous form, transform yourself into a tiny glass gas cloud. Uh, this can fit this can fit you in certain areas in the game that you might not have been able to access otherwise, so I really recommend trying that out for different purposes if you've never tried it. We also get a couple really good spells here that are not necromancy based, but Sleet Storm and Call Lightning. We talked about the importance of setting up water but uh i'm a big fan of taking call lightning because that's going to do double damage so at, at max it does 60 damage if you have create water set up um and then you can continue to keep calling down lightning which is really nice uh without expending a, a spell slot so this is honestly a really good uh option for damage early on in the game and i don't see a lot of people talking about call lightning um but you can continue to blast people with this if you create water set up for double damage that, that's really good and uh, the second option that we got here is also a sleet storm so this will interrupt concentration so if you have a lot of enemy mages this is a huge area of effect sleet storm and then well, after doing this this creates an icy surface so things are going to be tripping and falling but what is also nice about that is then you can use a fireball, creates water again. <laughs> so you can keep blasting with lightning. This this is a really great one, but also plant growth is good too. Um, this is kind of more of like the druid flavor choice because it gives you, uh, it quarters the movement speed. But uh, I think that Sleet Storm is a really big, useful spell in this repertoire. Lightning and, lightning and cold damage always have a use on a team because they... The thing with Baldur's Gate 3 compared to D&D is the fact that we can use lightning and cold damage so much more freely with Create Water. In uh, Classic Dungeons & Dragons, doesn't work the same as this. But uh, at level 6, we get more wild shape forms. And then we also get Fungal Infestion, which gives us raise a Mildeweed Molding Rusted Zombie from a corpse. So this uses a reaction too, but we can continue to keep drawing more creatures onto the battlefield, which is very important. So for our next level... Plant growth is a great option. I think plant growth is good. Creatures moving through the weeds have the movement speed quartered, so you can really just stop people from coming, raise the undead army on the other side, and just wreak havoc. Uh, so that's a really great option alongside it. We're going to get into level 7 here, which gives us some more spells that I really enjoy. Uh, we will be adding in the uh, Necromancer Wizard at a certain time, but... Here we get Blight, which is a uh, Necromancer spell plants take maximum damage from, but we have something, an item here, that's going to allow us to continue to spam our Necromancer spells, which is extremely powerful. So we get Grasping Vine and a few other choices here. I like to take out Polymorph and put on, we have two amazing spells that make this very powerful. Conjure Minor, Conjure, Conjure Minor Elemental gives us two Ice Imps, which are going to deal double damage in the water that I was previously talking about. And then we also get the Woodland Being, which can summon a Woodwode. So it has a summon within a summon. That is very nice. So this gives us two more options for crowd control. Uh, the Ice Imps are great because they can explode or they can go and attack with Icy Chromatic Orb or Ice Breath. So they got lots of damage that can be doubled. I always recommend Create Water. It's a very overpowered spell. And then we also get Ice Storm at this level too, which we can take off our Sleet Storm and use Ice Storm if you want. Uh, this adds damage to it, but it doesn't interrupt concentrations. And it's it's really up to you. I, I'll keep that on just because it's a level 3 versus level 4. But if you have spell slots, or an, I have a necklace on here that replenishes spell slots, and I recommend that alongside potions. At level 8, we get a, another feat here. This is really... The only big thing about this level alongside uh, being able to take ourselves Ice Storm. You can, I've seen a lot of people split it 7 and 5 with 5 levels of Wizard. But I'm going to show you a little bit of a different, my interpretation of it. So I think that taking Wisdom up to our max is really a great option. We can go with Warcaster for advantage on saving throws. And then Shock and Grasp as a reaction which will double with our water damage. Uh, set up water, but I don't think that that's the best option for this class if I'm being honest. I think that it's best to continue our wisdom, because we're going to be using a bit of necromancy magic as well. Alert's an another really great option that's underrated, plus 5 to initiative and can't be surprised. This is huge, because a lot of that happens in Act 3 and can end a run, especially if you're on honor mode. So we're going to go with the increased wisdom there. Level 9 gives us our next level spells, and we get Conjure Elemental, which allows us to take even more. Um... Typically, this is a good spell to take. Uh, we're going to take off Mass Cure Wounds. 
it's an action. Healing is not your number one thing you want to do in the battlefield. So we're going to take Conjure Elemental. Insect Plague is a really good spell that can create difficult terrain, and it fits the, the theme of the Necromancer, but Planar Binding also is a great concentration to focus on because this also fits the Necromancer. You take control of the mind of another creature, and then this will allow you to have another ally from the enemy side. So... You can go with Insect Plague or Planar Binding at this level. I think either of those works really great. So we're going to go with that. And then as we get into our next level, this is when we get another cantrip at level 10. Or we can do a little bit of a split. Now, this is where things can kind of go either way for the wizard, uh, necromancy, and druid connection. So there's a lot of different ways you can take this. You can go all the way to 11 druid and then one level of... Uh, the necromancer wizard or yeah you can go that way or what we can do now we do get a nice um we get even if you went a couple levels back you could take the wizard because the wizard is going to give us uh the ability to learn spells from spell scrolls and then we can equip them so we can take conjure elemental which doesn't scale off intelligence but uh there's so many ways you can take this build. It's up to your own interpretation. I'm just giving what I think works best. We get Ray of Frost, too. is a nice level one uh, cantrip to use for just uh, frost damage because water is a big focus of this. I also like Mage Hand because this is another way that's kind of funny to create water. Drop a water bottle, use Mage Hand, and even if you have the gloves that let you use Mage Hand as a bonus action, the, bo the Mage Hand can throw the water bottle, create water. It's actually pretty crazy. Um, and also, obviously, you can set that up before battle. It gives you another summon, which is really funny. I also like Minor Illusion or Shocking Grasp. So it's really one of these two options. You can go Shocking Grasp or Ray of Frost. It's really your choice. Um, this will give you... A, I think the Shocking Grasp might be the better one. I do like Minor Illusion because you can... If you don't have anyone else on your team, someone on your team should always have Minor Illusion. The reason being is you can create... Uh, distractions to seal things or to set up attacks like fireball or ice storm things like that to get an early advantage um, but if you have someone that already has that it doesn't really make sense to take it for our spells here now this is where it can get interesting mage armor is not a bad thing to take early on i also like shield which gives us the uh, increased armor class by five this is something good to waste your earlier spell slots on if you want to help help with survivability Find Familiar is nice because we can create another creature to follow us around. That makes this build pretty good. Sleep's pretty good. Combined 24 health points early on can be pretty nice. Um, Thunder Wave does not get the bonus damage, but I think that Chromatic Orb is a really great option as well because you can change it to Lightning, Chromatic Orb, or Cold, and that just gives us another option for level 1 spells. And then for the selected ones, Find Familiar, um, probably something like this. So Shield, Chromatic Orb, Magic Missile find familiar and as you get spells this is this is where this thing gets pretty crazy so uh we get our class here at level two and we get our grim harvest when you kill a creature with a spell you gain hit points equal to twice the spell slot used thrice it was a necromancy spell and with our club or with our uh our little thing here this is going to give us really great health restoration <laughs> and you're going to see how the uh, staff gives us the ability to continually cast our mag our necromancy level six spells um, so it's pretty good, <laughs> safe to say. I like to take False Life as another Necromancy spell, increase 7 hit points, and this can stack with a lot of gear to give yourself lots of utility, so I'll get into that when we talk about gear. Um, Witch Bolt is not amazing, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't recommend that for level 1 spell. Color Spray is probably better. And then for our prepared ones, I'll take something like that. So that's the Necromancer, and level 3 here... We get another level, we get a level 2 spell and prepared spells here, so you can get one more spell slot. Or we can go back and take another level of Druid, which gives us an improved Wild Shape, which we're not going to be in Wild Shape often, but improved Wild Strike's really nice. Uh, subclass feature, Symbiotic Embity, Spreading Spores. I think it's best to go with, like, final level Druid here. Take this Shape of Dinosaurus, whose Corrosive Spit can dissolve Armor Class. Extra cantrip, produce flames, not a bad cantrip just to have because you can create it and throw it on the same turn if you need to create water. Resistance if you don't already have it somewhere else. Resistance can be used in combat too. And then for our final level spells, Conjure Elemental and Insect Plague. And then we'll take uh, Planar Binding as well. So this gets pretty powerful. Cre Mass Cure Wounds can be good, especially like I'll take 
Um, I'll show you just like different gear selection if you wanted to roll with that. But there is, this is how the build gets pretty crazy. And um, we're gonna get into it with our summons here. So we get our summon elemental, or summon uh, familiar. I like the cat one personally, it's good distraction. So we can bring in our undead cat ally there. Um, and then we're gonna bring in our elemental, which you can upcast it. I think the water Miramadon flawlessly highlights this class because it can give you ice storm it can give you what like it can create water it's really powerful but you can also go with if you want a level five one the earth elemental every time it attacks it knocks creatures prone which is also really good so pick one of those whatever one you want to roll with i think the option's up to you but the water i'll bring in the water mirror just for example because it's got a lot of great spells it has heim High Mall Strike, it has Explosive Icicle, which is pretty much just your Ice Storm there. And then it has a main attack, which will do cold damage. So it pairs well with its with set up water, which is something we really want to set up as much as possible. Um, trying to find the Wood Woe. I don't know if that actually got taken off, but as we look into our spell, there it is. Okay, so prepared spells will take off. Oh, they got all messed up. Yeah, there we go. Entangle. This gets pretty powerful, as I mentioned. <laughs> um, so now we got our wood boat again. Minor elemental, so we can bring in the two ice methods. What's nice about these is they can explode and do ice damage. So uh, ice breath as well as death burst. So even like a necromancer doesn't always need to have just undead alongside it. We're also going to bring in the woodland being, which is really nice because... It can bring in its Woodwode here, so Fallen Lover. Another summon for us. This is getting quite wild, but I Am Groot is there. So yeah, we got ourselves a level six one. We got ourselves a level one, a level five, level four. And then that's not even to mention all the Create Undead that we have. So um, we got a lot of options. I'm trying to find Create Undead. We also have the, um, I guess it's whenever you, we don't make bodies here, but you can, whenever there's bodies around, you can use the fungal zombie and create the circle of spore zombies. So this is just our, our pre-corpse necromancy, which is actually pretty crazy. We got six creatures already on the battlefield. That's not even talking about animating the dead. So it gets wild, as you can see. We also have the flaming orb. I forgot to put that one on too. So that gives us seven. Uh, which is really nice. This one doesn't really feel like it's a legitimate creature, but that's our seventh there before any necromancies. And then where this build gets incredibly powerful is the Staff of Cherished Necromancy. What's nice about this, getting into the gear side of things, is this has uh, heightened necromancy, which gives creatures disadvantage on saving throws against your necromancy spells. Pretty huge. Alongside it has Life Essence Harvest. When the wielder kills a hostile creature with a spell, they greedily absorb its energy and gain Life Essence. This allows us to cast any necromancy spell, even level 6 ones. And if we kill with that, we get it again. So it's just a never-ending necromancy spell barrage, which is crazy. I also recommend having like the Torch of Revocation here. It just goes alongside it very well. I like Catherick Shield for plus one to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. So this is a really good one to have alongside it. It also fits the necromancy theme very well. Hood of the Weave, Circle of Bones I would prefer. Circle of Bones comes from um, Balthazar in Act 2, which gives your undead creatures, they get, um, they're becoming resistant to all physical damages. So they take half damage, which is really huge. Cloak of Protection to give us extra armor class because we are a bit squishier on the side of things. So... We're going to be using Armor of the Spore Keeper. What's nice about this is... Oh, it gets crazy. Uh, we get the ability to haste our team with this. So, plus one to spell save DC when dealing necrotic. Plus one necrotic damage on all attacks. And then we get Spore Sacks, which really hypes us up. I also like the Quick Spell Gloves cantrips that cost an action, cast a bonus action. So, if we go to cast that, we can use like our Bone Chill Necromancies or Shocking Grasp, Ray of Frost... And then I like to have the boots of striding. Really go for better boots than that. I don't have amazing boot options. Ring of Exalted Marrow gives you Extort the Risen, though, which is a really nice spell to subjugate the undead with your commands. So you can command other people's undead. Very powerful. Ring of Regeneration for health. And then the spell Crux Amulet to give us back spell slots. So 
this gets pretty crazy but whenever we go into our symbiotic entity this will give us 40 plus health so this is really nice just to keep a survivability but then we can also cast circlet of spores here so this is a pretty powerful spell because it's able to deal damage doubled whenever we're in this form here but alongside that we get ourselves the tin mass spores which it's an action but it stops creatures from moving we get the spreading spores seed an area with deadly spores two to 16 necrotic damage per turn to all creatures that inhale them except you and your allies so you can do a big fireball style spell there that protects you and hurts the enemy you get bitter bang spores which does a bit of damage there and we also get the haste spores which I just previously used but you could haste your entire team here for one turn but if you stay in it it's like you that's pretty powerful haste gives you an extra, extra action so you can give everyone in the area an extra action that's pretty much like broken uh that's from the armor there but the other way that we can go about doing this is to to add in the i don't know if i have the scroll for it at the moment but we want to have our final level necromancy spells um circle of death there we go so the circle of death as we um we can learn this spell because we're a wizard and then go into our spell slots here and then we can take wherever it is I'm trying to find it you might not be able to take it unless you take one more level of i think it, yeah i think it is actually one more level if you go 11 levels of druid because i'm not seeing it right here or actually is wizard one my bad there we go so then we can throw yeah this is where this gets a little bit excessively crazy then we get ourselves circle of death and height necromancy so um devastated target all surrounding creatures and it gives creatures disadvantage on necromancy saving throws so this is a level six spell that whenever we whenever we take on an enemy with this we get the life essence harvest uh so take on an enemy with this you can raise his body but then also you can continually just keep casting circle of death which goes boom 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 and hits all nearby enemies d uh 8d6 which is just an insane amount of damage um and you continually cast that because this this torch will allow you to continually cast it this is probably one of the most broken builds in baldur's gate 3 so yeah there's fungal infestation i don't have any bodies to bring up but this build is absolutely crazy i just want to share this because i've been playing around with this for weeks now and i finally got it perfectly figured out so there it is the necromancer spore druid build guide in baldur's gate 3 thank you so much for watching if you found this video useful please hit the subscribe button below and i'll see you in the next video